Ahoy and welcome! My name is Clemens Helm and you're watching CodeShip Testing Tuesday number 16. Recently we talked a lot about testing Ruby applications, but today we start an entirely new series on JavaScript testing. In this episode we talk about testing JavaScript applications with Jasmine. We already tested JavaScript in previous episodes with Selenium and Cucumber. Both frameworks performed integration tests by running a browser, interacting with the user interface and checking the outcome. Like the users of our web applications, these tests didn't care if certain functionality was implemented in JavaScript, in our backend application or at the database level. This kind of testing is totally sufficient if you only implement occasional click handlers and AJAX calls in JavaScript. But once you start writing your own components like jQuery plugins or data models, you probably want to test them at a finer grained level. That's what Jasmine is for. Jasmine is a unit testing framework for JavaScript. Its syntax encourages behavior-driven development and looks similar to RSpec syntax. To get started with Jasmine, we only need to download the latest version of the Jasmine standalone and unzip it. I already opened the package in my text editor. The package includes a demo application, so we can already run a sample test suite by opening specrunner.html in the browser. Jasmine runs all specs and reports the results on a web page. Let's look into the specrunner.html file to see how this works. The specrunner loads the necessary Jasmine files first. Jasmine.js contains the testing framework. Jasmine.html.js contains the HTML reporter which will run the tests when we open this web page and display the results. And Jasmine CSS is responsible for formatting the test results. Then the source files are included, followed by the spec files, which contain the tests. The source files live in the source directory and the spec files in the spec directory. But it is really up to you where you put them in your application, as long as you include them in the spec runner HTML file. The following script block sets up the Jasmine environment. You probably want to leave this block unchanged. As we saw when we run the spec suite, there are already a number of specs defined, but let's delete the source and spec files to start a new project. I recommend you to check them out though, to get a better understanding on how to write Jasmine specs. We want to develop a catalog of animals, so we start by creating an animal.js file in the source folder. In there, we add a constructor function. One important feature of many animals is that they've got a certain number of legs, depending on what kind of animal they are. Let's add a spec to specify that insects should have six legs. We create an animal spec.js in the spec folder and add our first spec in here. The call to describe defines a test suite. Here we name the subject that we want to test in this suite, that is an animal. All specs in this test suite should refer to this subject. So our spec, it should have six legs if it is an insect, refers to the animal. The call to it is called a spec. In the function we pass to it, we can write whatever code we want and some expectations. If one or more expectations fail, the spec fails. If all expectations succeed, the spec succeeds. In our case, we've only got one expectation. We expect an animal to have six legs after we defined insect as its kind. To run our specs, we need to include our JavaScript files in the spec runner. So we remove the obsolete script tags, that is the player, spec helper, and add our animal.js and animal spec.js. When we refresh our spec runner in the browser, our spec fails because our animal doesn't have a method numlegs yet. Let's add this method. And now, Jasmine complains that it expected the legs to be six, but they were undefined. When we let our method return six, the spec works. Let's add one more spec to make our app a little smarter. So it should have eight legs if it is a spider. The spec fails 
because our animal has only six legs instead of eight. But distinguishing between insects and non-insects solves the problem. So if the kind is insect, we want it to have six legs. Otherwise, we want it to have eight legs. And it works. Jasmine also supports other expectations. For example, the number of legs of a millipede varies. So we expect it to be undefined. And now our spec fails again. We can implement this behavior by explicitly mentioning the spider in our implementation. So if this kind is spider, only then we want to return eight. And now all our specs work because we get undefined for a millipede. Now it's time for a little refactoring to make our method more concise. So instead of this if block, we want to make a switch statement, which returns a different value depending on the kind. So in the case that it's insect, it should return six. And in the case of a spider, we want it to return eight. And then we can clean up the code below. Our specs still work, so we can be sure that our refactoring didn't break anything. Great! Jasmine has many more nice features. Next week I will show you how to use spies to check if methods and objects got called or not. Have a beautiful week and see you next Testing Tuesday. And of course, always stay shipping.